this is Daniel and welcome to the 8th part of this character modeling tutorial series. Moving on, continuing with the last part, I just want to add some final touches to this block out by giving some little hair indications. Um, and I'm just going to do this very rough, r roughly now. And here are some new techniques that you can learn as well. I don't like if I create a new mesh in a certain region, I like usually to start with something that I've already created. So go into the helmet, select maybe these two points here because they're kind of near the, the edge the, or the outline of this. Uh, hit Shift D, copy it, use the right click, but right mouse button to um, leave it where it is. Then hit P to separate it and only separate the selection. So now you have this in a separate object and from here on we can just begin and trace it. Now one more thing I can do here at this point is to uh, to activate here the magnet, these are the snapping tools, and I'll set it to snap to faces now. And I'll also change some options, uh, most importantly I'll check project individual elements, and now we should be good to go. You'll notice that now wherever you move the point it will always snap to the surface. So from no matter from what view you're looking, it's going to be snapped to the surface. You have to disable this magnet to disable this feature. Uh, let's move it back to where it was and we can now begin to, you know, just go from from one peak to the next and here we can just connect this up. Uh, you might want to give it a little bit of a curvature in some regions. Uh, let's do here and here, add something here and maybe finally here. Uh, then I think it would be nice if we could connect this somehow. Let's see what is it good way to do this. I'm trying to go to find some loops through here if it's possible in any way. Um, might have to do it this way. And now to make it all work, we do this. Um, it's already, oh no, this wasn't a face. Let's fill these quickly. And finally, on top, one, two, three. Trying to line it up always to, you know, make it make the topology work out. So here we have this. Quickly recalculate the normals with Shift N. Um, oh yeah, okay. Here it snapped by accident to the helmet. We don't want that, so just move them down a little bit so that it snaps to the head instead of the helmet. Now they're all pasted to the surface. Uh, you can give it a little bit more detail by adding a loop cut here. Hit G once and move it a little bit just to make sure they're all updated and snapped to the surface. And that should be good enough. Now, um, yeah, with that in place, let's select the entire thing. Uh, hit Shift N one more time just to make sure it's all facing in the right direction. And then hit Alt S to sort of uh, inflate it outwards. And now we'll just inflate it until it is a little bit inwards of the helmet. That should be roughly where the hair goes and then I'm just going to disable the snapping tools and extend it a bit more inwards so that we don't see where it ends. But there we go. First part of the hair is done. Um, it's just a quick indication of where the hair goes. Um, then we need something similar over here, uh, let's just do it individually. Turn the snapping settings back on, the magnet up there. This time we just, you know, create a small triangle. Uh, let's move on to the next. This looks kind of like a couple of, couple of things here. Now it's going to end up snapping way to the back, so disable these settings. And now correct the points from the side view. You don't need to uh, follow the side view exactly, but you know, just use the information that you <laughs> that you can use, and well, don't use whatever it doesn't really work out. Just make sure that in the end it roughly follows the same style and uh, it looks okay. Um, now, from from this view, maybe let's continue to just create the topology again. It will need to fill this up. Uh, we'll need a subdivision here. Let's fill this in. Create a triangle here and just fill this up as well. Again, uh, let's select these two new parts, 
hit Alt S and move them outwards a little bit to where the hair would roughly be. I'm also going to make them a little bit larger because I feel like as I trace them I kind of ended up making them a bit too small. And otherwise we should be fine. Yes, that's good. Um, we can make it easy for ourselves and just copy these two parts to the other side. Just fix it up a little bit before we make a copy of it. Right, this should be fine. Hit Shift C to bring the 3D cursor to the center. Select the part that you want to mirror. And actually, isn't there maybe a mirroring, mirroring feature? <laughs> mirror X. No, it doesn't work out like that. <laughs> Mirror not locally but globally X <laughs> still didn't work out. Uh, mirror. Um, okay, whatever. I I prefer the other method because that one works for me. I just make a copy, Shift to D, scale it, uh, set the pivot points to three cursor, scale it along X one minus, and then just reset the settings so that they're back to normal recalculate the normals and everything and then we're good to go. Now I'm just going to make it so that we don't see the edges here. Uh, let's bring this all a bit up and I believe that since this is not really visible anyway I can just delete it as well. And here we have the hair in the front done now. Now in the back uh, it's going to be something similar. Let's start out with this maybe, just make a copy, rotate it and bring it to the back. Do I have any reference for the back? Let's actually check quickly. Um, yeah, actually we find out now that the helmet really should be going quite far down. Uh, I didn't quite realize that, but seems to be that way now. So I think we might have to reconsider. Um, all right, and by the way, this picture is now a bit in the way, so I'm just going to hide it here. So we might have to uh, do something about that. Let's try to select off the helmet these points and just rotate them a little bit. And I'll pull them down. Now it's going to make the situation around the ear even more difficult, but uh, we just have to find a way to work work with it. But ideally, I would want to have these points just you know go down a little bit more so that we don't see a lot of the head down here. Um, ideally go back to the sculpt mode one more time, go to the slide relax brush, hold shift and brush over this a little bit just to just to you know align these a little bit better. Finally with the proportional editing tools I'm just going to make this curve a little bit smoother. Now we're going quite quite rough here now so this is really not lined up well with anything anymore but I'm doing my best to keep it still as clean as I can. Um, you might end up giving it even a slightly more organic feel since it's not all perfect straight lines and so on. So you know it might not even be so bad. So here back to the hair now I'm just going to make sure I still have selected this last part. And I just want if a few strands of hair stand out here in the back. I think this is a bit too short so I'm going to delete these two sides here and use only these these parts. Um, let's straighten this out a little bit as well. Let's bring it in here and copy it around a couple of times. Um, maybe don't put it in the middle because then we will be able to mirror it to the other side to make things easier and faster. And at this point we might as well want to try to merge these together. Where's this coming from? <laughs> All right, here we go. So merge at center, merge these two at center, merge these two at center, merge these two at center. Just hit, you know, M and then from the menu at center. And you might also want to select these rings now and relax them, flatten them maybe. Flatten, relax, flatten, relax. 
the lower part should be fine. Uh, now we might want to um, go ahead and mirror this to the other side. Shift D, uh, so pivot point to three cursor, scale X one minus, and set the settings back to what they were. Now here in the center, it looks like um, we might not need this last loop of points. Instead, we'll merge these two together and uh, just make you know something like this. One more, one more loop around here. So that looks good now. And yeah, I mean it's rough. It's it's fine. It's just a little preview of what we're going to make. Maybe we can just stretch this out for the rest. Just make portion editing settings on and bring this up here. Just make sure that the distance is roughly okay and that it doesn't intersect anywhere in a weird way. Um, but as long as we have this here, anything here at all, it will give us an impression of what it might look like if we just do this. And to give the hair finally a little bit of thickness, uh, go to the modifiers and give it a solid, solid few modifier. Um, if you have any artifacts that are strange, just go into edit mode, select all of it and hit shift N one more time to make sure that all the normals are facing the right direction. We can quickly change that with a face, uh, facing orientation. We see that our ears are wrong for some reason again. So let me quickly fix the ear on this side as well, shift N to recalculate that and then we can leave the face orientation mode again. Now in the modifier with the hair selected, just make it a bit thicker so that we have something more interesting to look at and then just make sure that all the hair is nicely tucked into the <laughs> helmet here. Alright and there you have it. Um, this is... oh, <laughs> almost forgot. We still have one more thing to do. The ring here around the neck. Uh, let's go ahead and add another circle. Um, we'll do 16 vertices this time. In edit mode, oh actually this time in object mode I'll move it into the right place because that will allow us to use the axis of the object uh, later on in edit mode. So now I'll scale it down in edit mode. I'll make sure that the object center stays in the center of the ring. So if I move the, the ring I do it in object mode. And also the rotation. Now fill it up, extrude up and scale it down, select the lower ring again, extrude it one more time, scale it down again. Um, then you might want to select the two, hit E one more time, then hit scale, um, yeah just like this, delete the faces and then we just want to hit Control E for the edge menu and then bridge edge loops. <laughs> that was quicker than I expected. <laughs> Pretty good, pretty good. We have some slight intersections again, but it's kind of to be expected. Let's just leave it here for now. Finally, there is the cape and uh, maybe we shouldn't really get into the cape at the moment because that will be just a you know straight plane anyway because we won't do folds for the cape as this will be simulated, or at least that's the plan. Uh, so yeah, I think I think that sort of concludes this video now. The character has kind of come along quite well, I would say. I mean, you, you have a nice, nice little preview of what the character is going to look like. Um, I suggest you really, you know, make sure your proportions are good at this stage. You don't want to have any strange proportions because these will carry over to your final and will be hard to fix later. Uh, if you want, you can play around a little bit with the display options can try the mat caps. There are some different ways of displaying it. Might be interesting for you to take a look at. You can also use the cavity option. You know, makes it look pretty nice. <laughs> there are a couple of things to play around with here. You can even add shadows if you want. <laughs> yeah, just some things to look at. Um, I'll show you one more trick to <laughs> make it look nice. You can also um, uh, go to solid view, actually now go to the material viewport shading view uh, or the one here at the bottom 
then go to your render settings and enable ambient occlusion. Then just play around with the distance a little bit until you have, I guess we have to make it a bit larger here so that we have the nice shadows. <laughs> there we go, that's also a nice looking preview. If you ask me, you can also hit this button here to quickly disable all the grids and extras and just take a look at what you've created. And if you ask me, it looks pretty nice. <laughs> can rotate the world as well here. That's a bit too bright in the front or change our panorama. There are a couple of different choices that you have here. Actually, I think, oh, these, these all look quite nice. <laughs> yeah. Just enjoy a little bit looking at your character <laughs> while, while you have the opportunity. This looks nice too. Anyway, let's go back to default settings. Uh, yeah, but otherwise just go back to the solid view and enable this again. It's just a little preview. All right, so uh, this video has also reached a good amount of a good length. Uh, so we'll leave things as they are here now. Maybe I'll make this horn a little bit larger. I felt that it's a bit too too insignificant at the moment. <laughs> Just a tiny bit more. That's fine, I think. All right, there we go. Uh, so Reg is coming along quite well. I hope you enjoyed this all. I'm really hoping that you were able to follow along to this point, and things are going to become more complicated <laughs> moving forward. So let's see what we're going to do next. I'll have to think about it a little bit, but in the next video, we'll all find out. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.